Chicago has come a long way. Students are starting to decide not to just quit when things are hard. I'm here at North Grand High School learning about why Chicago has improved their student achievement quite a bit. Given, you know, the socioeconomic status of the families of our students, there are many struggles and struggles within the community, including poverty, difficulties at home. Gang violence, losing loved ones. We've got kids that are taking care of their brothers and sisters while their parents are doing multiple jobs. I have three brothers. Nobody has gone to college. My brother, like, he's in jail now. It's just a little, a little hard. When I came here in 2012, we were a level three school, the worst you could possibly be. And over the course of the last few years, we've grown to be a level one school, which means that we are high performing. We've had a partnership here with the Network for College Success, and they've been helping us talk about what the struggles with our students are and, and how to help them out. We bring educators together from across schools and say, one, number one, you're not alone, so that issue you're having, other folks are having it. But two, let us help you solve the problem together. And they come up with amazing solutions. These kids are already low self-esteem. And when they come to school and immediately they've got four Fs to start out at the beginning of the year, what does that convey to them? We started realizing how important freshman year is. And that was where the idea of freshman seminar came from. They learned things like communication skills, technology skills, college awareness. NCS will have a chart that will break down a student with what their different test scores are, what their grades were like in the eighth grade. And I can use all of that information so I can help each student individually. Here at North Rand, we look at data all the time. We have our student portal and we can check to see how our grades are, what assignments we're missing, how many days we were absent. So you kind of see like a mini progress report. They can be empowered to really take charge of their grades and understand the impact. I check my grades like all the time so I can know and know I'm staying on track. All of our metrics have gone up from test scores to attendance and everything else, as well as setting up these students for enjoying high school. Yes, looking at data is really important, but you can't just look at data. We also ask them about their lives and, you know, how's it going at home and, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up and what do you want to do in your life? When they do that, they makes me feel like that I am capable of doing what I want to do in life. I would like to go to college to major in video game development. As a career, I want to be an architectural engineer. I'm determined to go to college. It's interesting how much students have visibility to where they stand and the fact that it draws the students to take more action is a great thing, hopefully be adopted throughout the country. This is a New York City public high school called the Academy for Software Engineering. Every teacher here is really using a data portal on a regular basis, recording what they're seeing with the student, looking up what the other teachers are putting in. So it makes it an ongoing collaboration to help these students. That name says that they use programming as a theme, but it's the idea that it's a small high school with teachers who want to engage these students on a very personal level and come up with the personalized learning plan to achieve their aspirations. It's a pretty amazing curriculum. Today, they were using 3D design software to build a headphone holder. Well, there were actually quite a variety of approaches. They could either clamp it onto the table or sit at the corner of the table. But that looks like it's ready to print almost, isn't it? Yeah, almost. Like, we need to change a few things. Well, that's pretty nice. Computer science is a way of thinking about how do things get done? What data do you need? How do you put it all together? This school is taking kids from all over New York City, mostly minority kids, mostly kids who get free school lunch, and a lot of kids coming in without much in the way of, of math skills. They take their student body, engage with them in a very personal way, and they achieve a 90% graduation rate. That's phenomenal. So it's really using data in the best way possible, and it's great to see this approach in action.
We're here at the University of Central Florida. They've been a pioneer at growing their student body while maintaining really great degree price and very high quality. And they've done that by adding blended learning, uh, where part of your class hours are online, and then fully online, where you don't need to come to the campus at all. I can work anywhere from 30 to 50 hours in a given week. I have no set hours, no set days off. Online classes work for me because I can go at my own pace, do the work whenever I have the time off from work. Many of our students here have a lot on their plate and they can't always find time to come to campus and take classes in a traditional way. And so I see online education as making a degree more accessible. Like, I like math a lot. We're given, like, the opportunity to take intermediate algebra and college algebra in the same semester. With the online, it just got adapted to the way I learned and, like, what I knew and what I needed to improve on and how I could improve on it. It was a huge advantage. Over 40% now of all credit hours are online or mixed mode. They're woven into the fabric at UCF. Figuring out in the online format how you create a sense of connection, that's where people have had to be innovative, and this university's been a leader in experimenting with that. They put together a Center for Distributed Learning to help the professors to learn about how to do a good online course. Some professors are great because of their charisma and their lecturing abilities. When you translate to an online environment, you actually have a blank canvas to work from and you have to work really hard to project your personality. One of the most important parts was being connected with my instructional designer. I saw myself as the expert in anthropology, but she is the expert in online teaching and learning. So can you create like a juvenile work? Getting feedback on what material works, bringing those professors up to speed. It's taken a lot of years to get these things right, but now, a lot is known about how to do this well, and this university's been a leader in that. Some of the words and adjectives I would use to describe the application process, bar none, anxiety. Anxiety, misery, <laughs> confusion. Tedious and overwhelming. It's uncertain. I think overall frustrating. Each year, Nearly half of American high school students eligible for government financial aid don't complete the application. Some don't apply, some don't get approved, because that's sort of the ultimate test of, is the process a barrier to the eligible pool? I feel for students because on a good day, it's complicated. On a bad day, it's almost insurmountable for them. My parents didn't go to college. I couldn't rely on my parents anymore. I was 27 years old. I actually worked in the auto shop for three semesters. Not having a green card while you're applying for the FAFSA application is probably the most heart-wrenching and miserable process that you would probably ever go through in your life. It just was really complex. The process needs to be simpler in order to pull those people into the system so that they can successfully complete their college education and be part of the American workforce. And this is a great way to do it, listening to our stories, asking us questions, and using that information to build a better process.